and right on schedule, the Bonehead Detectives. Welcome back, fellow Boneheads. And as promised, we're going to check in with the loudest family in the Cretaceous neighborhood. That's right. We're keeping up with the Rex, and Ken Carpenter will present his, uh, excellent clues about T-Rex's child. I have in front of me some dinosaur eggs from China, and these are very elongated, kind of the shape that we would expect for Tyrannosaurus rex. To give you a feel for its size, I have here a chicken egg. Careful, Ken. Don't drop it. But what's really exciting and very rare is this clutch of eggs here, which are very badly crushed. But we do have an embryo that's lying here. You can see the eye socket, the skull, the backbone in here, the pelvis, the hind leg. This embryo is about the size that we would expect for a Tyrannosaurus rex. We can imagine this hatchling coming out of the egg and scurrying off into the underbrush, or possibly if there was parental care, it may have scurried off and joined its parents. And picking up the mystery trail, my main man, Dr. Bob Bakker, says he has fossil record proof that Mama and Papa Rex did look after their little ones. You know, I've wondered for a long time whether a mother T-Rex would feed her chicks or whether the baby T-Rex was on its own. Well, we have the proof right here in my museum. We have a relative of T-Rex called the aloe, and we know it chewed really big dinosaurs. This is a brontosaurus hip bone, and it's been chewed and gnawed and cracked and scraped by adult aloes. How do we know that? We find the broken teeth of the adult meat-eating dinosaurs. You see, meat-eating dinosaurs would chew and break a tooth off. But that was okay. New teeth would grow in. Those broken teeth tell you exactly who chewed what and when. So here's the adult going chew and gnash and claw and rough, rough, rough. Well, we got other chew marks. Tiny little one right there. Minute, like a, like a pin was dragged across it. Who did that? This is really exciting. The baby dinosaur. Here's a guy, maybe two pounds, fresh out of the egg, chewing on the same giant bone that its mother did. So if you hatched out of the egg, and you're a T-Rex or an aloe or raptor, your first meal would be provided by mom, and your first meal is steak. 6,000 pounds of steak. Aw, look at little baby T-Rex. Isn't he cute? I don't know about cute. Look kind of hungry to me. Well, he's in luck. I think mom's calling him in for dinner. Talking about growing up being strong, what did T-Rex eat to end up 40 feet tall? Well, we asked our old pal Phil Curry to look into the answer to that question. He's out in the field opening up the paleo fridge to look at one of T-Rex's favorite snacks. It was a plant-eating dino with the appetizing name Edmontosaurus. Boneheads like this uh, are a pretty good indication that many of the prey species for animals like Tyrannosaurus rex were in fact herding animals. These uh, animals uh, were herding probably because they were moving from region to region as food resources changed over the course of the year. I would suspect that the Tyrannosaurus were in fact following these herds and that the old individuals and that the young individuals that strayed too far from the herds were the most likely prey for the Tyrannosaurus and these are the animals they actively hunted down. So the Edmontosaurus that got separated from the herd, like the very old and very young, didn't stand a chance. But in order to catch up with the herd, the T-Rex would have to be pretty fast. I thought those big guys weren't very quick on their feet. Sammy, that's an old idea and it's bunk. Next, more clues on the real T-Rex, the Cretaceous Speed Freak. Don't go away. We'll be right back. 